I saw a report on the Telegraph this morning that stated that immigration has failed to raise living standards in Britain. Surprise, surprise. But then I also googled the very report and found that The Guardian was reporting exactly the counter case from the very same report. It was saying that UK growth since 2010 has been lacklustre and only kept alive by immigration. Now, you might say, well, this is typical of the classic left and right. One makes one case, the other makes the counter case and they argue it out in Parliament. But it feels to me with mass immigration, it's just too big of an issue to think it's a minor disagreement. Which way we go on this will define the future of the UK and Europe. At present, we have about 1 million people a year coming in. And with Keir Starmer likely to win the upcoming election, do you really think he's going to bring that number down at all? Yet the bitterest pill is even if he tried, which he won't, could he do it anyway? Well, he couldn't, because the reality is that we're governed now by a supranational, international elite of liberal authoritarians who actually dictate our economic and our national policy. We saw this in full swing when we voted for Brexit and it made no difference whatsoever, as well as when Liz Truss came in and she was ousted by the liberal authoritarians for her economic reforms and they re-implemented a company man who do what they say, namely Rishi Sunak. The reality is that the system of liberal capitalism that we live under wants free movement of people and free movement of capital flowing in order to maintain its political control. They want a constantly moving, chaotic and confused mass of people as that's easy to control and organised people can stand up to globalism. Yet most people don't even think in these terms because they're lost in the culture wars with the Wokies and the traditionalists, the Wokies of course being useful idiots to enforce the policies of the regime on the ground. And while the blue-haired people scream and shout and think they're rebels, they don't realise they share the same social values as Goldman Sachs and Hollywood. So it seems to me that the massive numbers coming in are going to continue, as well as the problems that come with those. And if you notice any of these, even worse, mention any of them, you will be called an evil racist. Of course, whether you're actually racist or not is irrelevant to these people. What racist actually means is you don't believe in the present economic system and you don't abide with progressive ideology. Yet what is that progressive ideology we're all supposed to live under in this day and age? Essentially, it's something like... We all just want the same thing deep down. So, you know, don't think you're different than anybody else and just muddle on together. Well, that's all very nice sounding and sweet on the surface. And superficially, I suppose it's true. Most people just want a happy family and a peaceful life. Yet in a deeper sense, for anybody paying attention, it hasn't been true. Just take... Islam, for instance, there's been a lot of Muslims that have come to the Western world and the Blairite vision of them becoming Van Gogh and Abba-loving liberal Wokies hasn't really turned into reality. In fact, what we have seen is what I grew up in my home city of Leicester. We haven't really got multiculturalism, as we're so often told. We've actually got monoculturalism within a broader multicultural system. Yes, admittedly, there has been some cultural crossover. Sikhs seem very patriotic, for instance, and some people embrace the cultures, traditions and religions of other groups. But broadly speaking, we've maintained to our own cultural histories. Now, personally, I actually think there's something quite beautiful about that. It shows that human beings have a loyalty, a heart and a soul to their ancestors and their cultures, exactly what the modern world doesn't think people have. But on the downside, it's leading to lots of friction between different groups, many people feeling like they're losing their own towns and cities, as well as being yelled at for being some evil racist monster if you simply notice the actual situations that we're facing. And as much as the liberal authoritarians keep yelling and screaming at people for not adhering to their ideology, reality is going to break through eventually. People do seem to prefer their own cultural enclaves. And as I say, simply for stating any of this, a Guardian Easter would call me evil. But what's interesting is if you take the words of Mr. Diversity himself, Sadiq Khan, you'll find he's saying exactly the same thing, just in an inverted way to suit his own Muslim community. The other big issue faced in London, is particularly uh, you know, Londoners of Islamic faith, is the issue of housing. And so we need to build far more homes in our city because, you know, often... People from minority communities want to live near a mosque, near halal food, near places uh, where there are other people like them, so they, they, you know, for a variety of obvious uh, reasons. And they're priced out because there's not enough housing. So we're going to build at least 40,000 council homes, at least 6,000 rent control homes. And the final thing to say in relation to uh, Londoners who are Muslim is, look, uh, one of our strengths is our diversity. It's you know, something I'm really proud of. Now, why Sadiq? 
Pray tell, if diversity is so good, do Muslims need to be near other Muslims? What do they need to have their own cultural norms for if diversity is such a strength? Of course, Sadiq, like everyone else, knows deep down that people from a specific ethnos, religion, society tend to like to be near that to live their lives, and that's completely okay. It's just that Sadiq Khan gets a free pass as he views, or progressives view, Muslims as a minority ethnic group and therefore good and virtuous. If Nigel Farage said the same thing about white European Christians, he'd be cancelled. So it seems to me then that the construction of our modern world is just very badly thought out. And it is badly thought out because it hasn't been thought out. It's led simply by greed and money and leftist ideology on the other side. It's often implied that they're trying to build this post-cultural, post-identity type world, but they never actually take that vision seriously. Now, personally, I might have more sympathy for it if they tried to prep the people democratically first to see if this is what people want, or they tried to implement some sort of unifying Advaita Vedanta non-dual spirituality, which sees human beings simply as the universe manifest rather than individuals. I know it sounds a bit wacky, but at least it would be some form of unifying structure to bring people together and share in a shared lifestyle. But they never do anything like that, ever. They just implement what they want and then yell at you if you don't go on board with it. What it seems to me that we're facing then is a sort of liberal economic and liberal cultural madness. Everything is moving into chaos and it's kept together by this Blairite media spin on the surface. Things such as this I'm showing you a screen where Euro-liberal elites clap their own desecration of their culture because they think it's somehow diverse and wonderful. And this is all happening where just around the corner in the very same city we have gang fights occurring from various different factions of the third world. Seems to me then that some form of balkanization is inevitable, not because I desire it politically, because that's probably going to be the natural phenomenon we're already seeing occurring in its early stages in the UK and other European countries. Now, as this process begins to increase in the coming decades, we're likely to see more and more people waking up to the soullessness of globalism, its greed and its poisonous leftist ideology. At that point, I personally can see something like secession starting to be put on the table. However, this is all a topic I've got in the works for a big video coming up predicting the future. But in the meantime, please do let me know your thoughts down below. And if you're new, please do consider subscribing to the channel.